That's from also come take and invest. We're talking about investing, finance, and professional development. That's the recording time of 1:14 p.m. on Eastern Time. It's three thousand eight hundred twenty-one dollars, up about one point four eight percent so far. On overall crypto market, see clearly we're relatively flat to up at the moment, with one specific altcoin, Polkadot, currently up about close to eight point five percent at the moment. And as I was like looking into the news front, well, I read the news basically on an every hourly time frame. And uh, I would say collectively, there are two influential news um, that popped up in the media front that drive some stir into the market. And they came from, came from two uh, respective uh, influential members in the crypto ecosystem, if you may. So one is Naya Bukali um, on his recent Twitter post um, saying his 2022 predictions on Bitcoin, right? And uh, also another one coming from Michael Sayer. Uh, so both uh, post or press release or public announcements, if you may, or a speech that they've made to a, to the public world are both bullish, and I would say highly bullish. Um, I wouldn't say outrageous, but um, kind of raise a flag, right? Uh, like kind of raise eyebrows type of predictions because those numbers are relatively astronomical in comparison to the current level that we at right now, right? So the first one is Naya Bukali, and I can show you on his recent Twitter post. Let me just show you right now. So if you see in the middle, um, he's basically said a lot of things about like his predictions on what's going to be unfolding in 2022. He didn't really say anything along the line like with respect to the timing of obviously the first one on the bullet point number one, when will Bitcoin hit 100K, right? And um, he's basically saying that there's a lot of unfolding that's going to be happening with respect to two other countries. And I believe those are would be South American region countries should be adopting, um, you know, Bitcoin, you know, following the footstep of obviously El Salvador as the first country to be adopting Bitcoin for obvious reasons, right? And then he also talks about uh, some of the, uh, electoral issues with respect to U.S. election this year and how that will triangulate into obviously the crypto bills uh, on this passing going forward and what are some of the major hurdles. And he also talks about other things that you know will be unfolding with respect to Bitcoin City uh, will commence construction obviously as he laid out here. Volcano bonds um, will be oversubscribed basically triangulate with the office subscriptions of just crypto as a whole on a macro perspective, right? Um, and he will, he foresees some uh, more of an unknown kind of a mixed signal message, like a huge surprise at the Bitcoin conference. Um, I'm not sure what that really means or entails, uh, but it's uh, some cryptic message, but obviously he lays out some tactical, um, I guess, predictions on what's going to be happening in this year. It seems like with all of these triangulations, uh, which will obviously have a direct correlation to alignment with the corporate adoptions on both, um, in obviously in a corporate perspective, but also in the, in the uh, country-wide perspective and also in the domestic slash international perspective as well. So seems interesting. And then the next one that I see, uh, let's go back into the chart now. Um, on a couple of media affectation, uh, I'm not sure how credible they are, coming from Cointelegraph, coming from uh, Bazinga as well. Uh, talk about Michael Sayer. It seems like he's uh, buying a lot more Bitcoin recently. Um, and he's predicting that within Q1, sometimes in February, um, or in the next couple of weeks even, even, I even heard some uh, YouTube analysts or if you came and call them analysts saying that Bitcoin will hit 120k um, in this next couple of weeks, um, which is obviously you know just a out. I mean, it is an astronomical number to see that in comparison to the level we're trading at. We're trading at 47 or well, 48 thousand if you get the benefit of the doubts, right? Basically, 400 dollars away, but. In a technical perspective, right? Does that make sense, right? Ultimately, I'm, you know, as you know me, I'm not a wizard. Uh, I'm not like those other analysts that can predict the future like the way they are predicting. Uh, but does that make any sense to be reaching, you know, 
this high of a of a level in a technical perspective, does that even logically make sense in translations? Let's say a hundred k, a hundred and twenty k, in let's say the latest February, right? So we'll dive into that to see what that really means. So before I do that, let's just look into the other news beside the two other news that we just popped up right now. Um, so I would say the first one's on Bazinga, but another Bazinga news talk about on uh, with respect to Dogecoin uh, being more popular than Bitcoin on Reddit in 2021. And also with respect to Tesla, it seems like they are incurring more uh, exposure into Bitcoin um, based on their recent uh, release uh, on their on their public release statements. So quite interesting to see more corporate adoptions. Um, and then another one that I see on the news on Cointelegraph is with respect to, again, President Bukali. I think I'm saying his last name correctly, by the way. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, again, with his predictions on Bitcoin rallying 100K. Uh, due to further um, adoptions on a countrywide perspective. Uh, he didn't specify which countries, but I would foresee knowing the fact that El Salvador is, you know, one of the smaller country by, you know, per capita, I would assume that it's going to be another South uh, American um, uh, country. Uh, there's going to be in nearby uh, proximity of El Salvador. And then some other news that I see here um, would be on Cointelegraph again. Not sure how substantive these news are, really, to be honest. There's a lot of, like, outrageous, well, not outrageous. Uh, that, that might be a little bit too of a left field, but right, definitely raise some eyebrows, right, with respect to their predictions. Uh, saying that Bitcoin start at 2022 at 47.2K as a fresh start. Um, do we see a bullish run coming? So just another technical speculative type of um, article. So again, right, ignoring all the noise, right? Ultimately, we do not make predictions that way. Um, no, we do have do we have that wizardry to do so. Um, so let's just dive into the technicals to see what these people are really talking about, right? So with respect to Ethereum, as I'm recording us off 121 p.m. on the Eastern time, Ethereum contract $3,816, up about 1.32% so far. You can see clearly we're reversing right now with the 45 of 70. We're slowly forming a golden cross. You can see clearly we form, we curved down. That was a death cross. That's why we see this two red track uh, leap down. Makes sense. This happens whenever we see a cross downward on the MACD over the signal. And right now we're doing the opposite. So as we leap up, this will triangulate into a bullish momentum. Right, and obviously with Bitcoin prediction, um, not sure how substantive is the hundred K, um, in the next couple of weeks prediction. Uh, so we'll dive into that as a next one. But right now, I think Ethereum is still in a bullish sentiment. Right, we're still in the fair level in terms of incurring risk at the moment. We are basically attempting to break above, um, the three thousand eight hundred and fifty all over again. We basically give that benefit of the doubt that we're almost getting there already. So more bullishness happening for Ethereum ahead. Um, obviously, it stemmed from all of these positive news we've been getting so far, right? Bitcoin is currently down about 0.5%. Right now, we are in between the 45 and the 47, right? Um, again, like the 45 was basically the dip, right? And right now, with the 43 out of 70, um, we're still in a downward wedge, so seeing a bullish surge coming wouldn't be surprising. But you can see clearly that the, the signal line is over the uh, is under the MACD line. So it's kind of a mixed signal at the moment. We are at the oversold level. Well, not at the entire oversold, but we at the lower echelon of the neutral. So not terrible, not the best, but um, triangulating into a bold surge to hit a almost like 200% from here. I just don't see how that will be possible. Um, I think it will be possible to reach all-time high again, but by then we will be basically reaching to like a RSI scale of 70 over 70. Like, right, we have to basically break this first level first, like 52, 700, right? And then we have a bunch of resistance level at the 60, right? Which is another resistance level we need to crack through. And then you will have encounters of around like the 63,500 based on the consolidation level, right? Just like take a look at each consolidated level. It's basically each 
barriers of entry you have to get above, right? And then if you know contingent on us actually breaking those one, two, three, four, five, five levels, right? We'll get to all time highs all over again, right? And now by then we'll be extremely overbought. I don't really see that happening to for us to keep leaping up this way because that will be just not logical, especially not within like the next couple of months at least. Um, but in terms of like, if you compare just the apples to apples, right? Bitcoin versus Ethereum. I think Ethereum actually have a better shot of leaping up in comparison to Bitcoin right now, just based on the setup right now. I think Weibo is trying to give me a news right now. Oh, this is a news that we already talked about. Dogecoin more popular than Bitcoin, right? So moving on to the next one. Uh, with respect to Dogecoin now, it seems like I shifted the order by accident. Um, Dogecoin right now is the 1750. It's leaping up because of the overall market is leaping up. Again, right, 16 to 16 cents to below will still be the below level. Right now, the 45 of 70 is not the best, not the worst, right? So um, ultimately, you have to believe in long term. Uh, but if you hedge against, like, let's say the Elon Musk sporadic tweets, or if you observe the corporate uh, influence that Dogecoin has uh, with the people surrounding it, I think if you bet on this for a long term and you believe this, you know, this will actually translate into long term usage or utilization on corporate front. Yeah, it's not a bad hedge, I would say, for Dogecoin. Cardano, anywhere from um, 135 to below to 120 is still better level with the 50 out of 70. So, again, more just okay level, not the best, right? Solana is at the 177 right now. Anywhere from 155 to below would be better level for us. Uh, 155, 133 to 113 from here. XRP right now is at the 80, 86 basically. Uh, we're reversing up right now. We're about to form a golden cross. We are the 46 out of 70. Uh, again, right? Anywhere from 88 to 78 is still fair game, right? I think 78 to 75 is the best level for us to incur risk, right? Polkadot is up about 9% so far. Uh, anywhere from 26 to below will be the best level. Right now, I wouldn't really touch it. I think uh, the better time came, you know, weeks ago when, like, the basically the previous two Saturdays, right? Algorand is up about down about 1.17%, right? Anywhere from 136 to below to 125 will still be the better level. I would not touch Algorand despite selling down a little bit right now. I think this is extremely high risk. We're at the 55 of 70. Um, and at the same time, you can see how much of an outline we form on MACD front. So I don't think this is a good risk. Uh, at least I'm, it's not tolerable for me in terms of risk incurrence. Shiba Inu is um, flat at the moment. Uh, anywhere from 29.50 to below will still be a better level. We got there like basically previous uh, Saturdays. MACTAC is basically down about 0.16%. Again, right, as we sell down, which we formed a death cross recently, we're gonna come down from the 56 out of 70. So this is like pretty overbought right now. 175 to 143 would be the better level. I will start placing my orders in around here. AVAX uh, 115, um, again, right? 81 to 60 would still be a better level for us from here. Luna is up, up, basically uh, down about 2% right now. Um, Again, right, we're going to see some sell-off down to 75 first as a resistance level, knowing the fact that we've basically formed that resistance for not a long time, but just like about approximately half a week. Um, and we will leap down to 62, we will leap down to 52, to 45 from here, which I believe that's 40, I would say 52 to 45 would be a better level for me to incur risk at. So we saw this uh, Twitter post already. Seems like he does. Uh, he is quite vocal on uh, on the internet, especially on Twitter, Bitcoin City. Uh, but it's kind of interesting. He 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 looks like um like a adolescent, I guess, uh, wearing a hat backward sunglasses. But I mean, he is um the president of El Salvador. So, but uh, it's quite interesting to see his uh attire. Uh, you know, in comparisons to like other politicians that typically wear suits. But I guess like. That's him being real. <laughs> I don't know how he who he is or how he is, but uh, it's interesting to see the that's the way he dresses. In respect to Aunt Enron, uh, we are at the forty one out of seventy. So anywhere from um, again right the one two thirty three to two thirty five 
was the dip, right? That we got previous days. Um, but I think right now still not a terrible level to incur risk still. Uh, this is still fair in terms of the obviously we're not like completely oversold right now, but we still we on the like up echelon of oversold, but still oversold per se, right? In respect to uh, risk management level, these are levels that I have uh, revised and uh, refined a little bit more as of today on Jan 2nd. Um, hopefully this is helpful and uh, let me know if you have any questions, right? It seems like the 100k target that um, the two respective influential members have laid out is questionable, I would say. In a technical front, I don't think it makes quite much logical sense at all. I mean, I am holding um, Bitcoin and I am holding Ethereum. I do wish that's gonna be happening, but I think if that was the case that we actually translate into this surge, right, to 120K, let's just say, or 100K at least, um, it will create a huge outlier and it would be, um, it will surge up really fast, but the crash will also be very fast as well. Like whatever goes up really, really fast comes down just as fast, right? So. If we see something like that, um, I'll definitely raise the flag on, hey guys, we might be want to sell soon, right? So I'll watch out for that um, because like whenever you see some outliers like that or, on like these type of um, rotations or um, purchases among corporate investors, it worries me a bit, right? And, um, and ultimately, we also want to be aware of the incentives behind the news, like why are they posting or saying this now? right um or they just try to jerk us right ultimately we have to understand their true incentives um so we'll see how that goes so i'll keep an eye out on it so this is my second one of, of uh, this sunday really appreciate you for joining me again and stay subscribed take care